Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. So we're going to be moving on to more of the Resident Evil 2 board game, and we're going to knock out all of the female zombies that come with it. These are all the lady zombies that come with the... You know the the shorts and the and the tank tops there, and uh, they're going to be pretty straightforward to paint. I think that they're going to be pretty simple. So let's just get to it because these ladies are a lot of fun to paint. So the first big thing to do is you actually want to start with a layer of gray. I'm going to start with some ash gray. That's what I used as a base coat. You can do either a spray primer or you can just sort of brush it on there. What you can do is you can just sort of brush a single color on and use that as a base coat. And you can do that in place of a primer if you want to do that. But yeah, I started with a little bit of ash gray. And we're going to move on to their clothes immediately afterward because the reason we start, we wanted to start with Ash Gray here is because it makes for a really good zombie skin tone. So now we'll just move on to their clothes. Now I'm sort of thinking that they've got like a, um, like a canvas green color for shorts. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some angel green here. It's a nice dark green color. And we'll just use that as a, uh, as a single color for all of their shorts. And I would say too, it doesn't really matter what brush you want to use. Like if we wanted to use our, our three pack of brushes that we bought, we can probably just use the base coat brush. I think that it'll be okay. And yeah, you're just going to knock out a single layer of this angel green on their shorts. All right, a little bit something like that. You're just gonna get a nice even green color on all of the shorts like that. Again, really, really simple thing, but you're just gonna do that with all four of them. All right, and that's it for all of the shorts. Ah, oh, knocked her over. That's it for all of the shorts. Next up, why don't we move on to their hair, and why don't we do the same thing that we did with the male zombies, where we do a little bit of uniformity and a little bit of variety, and in this case, we're going to do their hair color all the same. So we'll take out some oak brown, just a nice, solid brown color, that's all that that is. It's a little bit of a darker brown color, but it's still just a brown color. And you can use the same brush, you know, I'll just continue using that, that one base coat brush, and this shouldn't really take any time. You know, still still be careful, don't, don't rush it or anything like that, but... Uh, yeah, just, just get uh, a nice layer of this oak brown onto their hair, and that should be it. All right, a little something like that. That's all that you need to do there. Focus, focus, please. There we go. That's, that's not too bad. But yeah, just a nice solid layer of oak brown over the hair, like so. We're going to do that with all four of them. All right, and I would say that that about does it for all of the hair. Yeah, we've got a got a nice layer of oak brown on their hair, so it looks good. Next up, why don't we knock out all of their shoes? And I just sort of imagine that they're wearing regular plain old tennis shoes. So what we'll do is we'll just use some regular matte white, and we'll just use that for the shoes, and I think that that will be just fine. And you can continue using the same brush. I don't think it really matters. There you go, just a little something like that. You get uh, just a nice white color on their tennis shoes and that makes it look like they're wearing actual tennis shoes. And we're gonna do again, the same thing with all of them. All right, and there you go. That's all of their tennis shoes down. And now we're gonna move on to the fun part and that's that we're gonna do different shirts for all of them, different colored shirts. And I feel like we're, we're going to do a little bit of an opposite thing with the male zombies, where we'll do a little bit of a brighter color scheme. And I figured what we'll do is we'll try to do some, uh, some like, fairer or brighter shades of red and, and, and colors that are sort of red adjacent. So what we'll do is we'll start with some dragon red, and we'll do that for the first one. All right, and there you go. That's just a nice red color for the first one. It's kind of hard to get the, uh, the sort of like shirt strap that goes right underneath her face without painting her actual face because it gets so close. She's got that, that sort of like, you know, hanging head there. That's okay, just do the best that you can. It doesn't have to look perfect. And I think that when we go over everything with the quick shade later on, it'll sort of fill in any, any sort of gaps or, or imperfections that, that you might have. All right, so that's it for one of them. 
going to rinse that off, and then we're going to move on to another uh, color that is uh, about as bright, or about as prominent, but it is still a different color. And what we'll do is we'll use some lava orange, and I think that this will be fine for another shirt. Right, and there you go that's just another one and again you can kind of see there that you've got a similar sort of color and tone there but it's still a little bit different you can you can tell them apart uh at a at a very very quick glance which is what we're looking for for another one i think that uh, warlock purple will actually do just fine it's sort of like a pinkish color basically all right and there you go that's another shirt down just like that again a little bit different at a glance but similar and this one might be a little bit of a gamble, but I think it'll work. And I think that what we'll do is we'll take some tanned flesh, and this will just be a, a nice color to sort of round it all out for this last shirt here. I think that will be okay. Might look, I don't know, like, uh, like I said, it, it seems weird. You wouldn't initially think, oh yeah, you use a flesh color for like t-shirts, uh, especially for a miniature that already has flesh on it. Well, in this case, it's a zombie, so it's all dead flesh, similar to what we did with the male zombies. We're going to leave that ash gray color as the skin tone, and then we'll go over everything with quick, quick shade, and I think that'll be fine. And because that skin tone is so gray and dead and gross looking, I think that it won't be uh, distracting, and I don't think it'll take away from a sort of fleshy color for the t-shirt. I think that it'll be fine. And there we go. Yeah, I think that that'll be just fine. I think that that's different enough from the regular skin tone and also different enough from the other shirts that we've already done. But again, it just it's a nice sort of way of adding a little bit of variety. All right, and then after we're done with all of that, we're going to move on to the quick shade. There's not a lot else to do. We're going to do some bloody details and all that, but in terms of just knocking out some really quick, simple, table-ready miniatures, you've done pretty much everything that you need to do. I think that the female zombies are actually pretty easy. So what we'll do is we'll take out some strong tone right here. It's the same quick shade that we used for the male zombies and for the survivors. And you're just going to go over the entirety of each zombie using this strong tone here. And I would just recommend using a big, ratty, no-name brush with, with soft bristles, and that will be just fine. And we'll start with the one that is the most dry. I believe that the one that I painted red uh, with the red shirt here is probably more dry than the other. So we'll just go down the line a little bit here. Kind of show you what it looks like after I'm done, and then I'll move on to the next one. And there you go, that just sort of gives her a nice, nice dead look. Everything starts to come together, all the details start to form, all of the shade comes together. Focus, please, focus. There we go, that's a little bit better. And yeah, you're just going to do that with all of them. So after you're done with that, I would say definitely let them dry before you move on to the next thing. So I'm going to knock all these out, and then I'm going to let them dry, and then I'll be back in a minute. All right, and now they are nice and dried. You can kind of see when you look at them that uh, everything is is come along pretty darn well there. Please stay focused, camera. Uh, just got an autofocus on. But yeah, there you go. And yeah, that's it. Like the brown and the the, the brown shade and the gray flesh just gives a very very necrotic dead, nasty sort of look. It looks great. Okay, and you don't have to do this next part here, but I would recommend that you do it if you have it as an option, and that's that I would put a layer of matte varnish over everything. And that will just add a little bit of an extra layer of protection and just sort of increase the lifespan of your miniatures and all that. Again, you don't have to, but I would recommend that you do it if it is an option for you, and you just, you know, apply it normally like so. And that shouldn't be a big deal. And then you want to let that fully dry before we move on to the next thing. So I'm just going to apply this, let them dry, and then move on. But again, if you want to skip this and just move on to the next step, you are totally welcome to. All right, and now that layer of the matte varnish is pretty well completely dried. So now we're going to move on to the actual blood, and we'll take out our glistening blood that came with this set. Now, I mentioned this in the last video, and I will, I will just say it again because it, it really, really is something... Uh, that I feel like is is worth noting, and that's that Citadel's Blood for the Blood God, this is the best stuff that you're going to get for blood. Now, I do still want to use everything that comes with the Army Painter Mega Paint set, so I'm going to continue using this, but if you can, get this stuff, because it's 
way better. Sorry, Army Painter, but this this is the superior stuff. It just is. <laughs> I mean, I still like this. I like this glistening blood. But that uh, Citadel brand, Blood for the Blood God, is pretty fantastic stuff. And now we're just going to take any brush. It really doesn't matter. It can be just an old ratty no-name brush or, or whatever. And now we're just going to be a little bit conservative with our blood, but you're just going to get some blood all over there. Now, the biggest thing that I would say, and I've, I've said this in the past and I will continue to say it again, and that's that less is more. Don't go completely hog wild with all of the blood. Don't just splatter it on everywhere over the entire miniature, but just sort of dab it, just sort of lightly apply it, and just do it in small increments. Only like look for the wounds. Like like the big the big wound on her on her rib cage there is really prominent. So you can kinda you can kinda go a little bit hog wild on that, but still don't go too nuts. And then just sort of, you know, bring your bristles down a little bit like that to make it look like the blood is kind of running, the same way that we did the male zombies. And just sort of look around, you know, again, she's got some like little cuts on, on her arm here. So you could just kind of get those really quickly, just like that. Again, nothing special. And then just bring your bristles down, make it look like the blood is running. I would say that in a way it's actually better to use like a ratty brush with, with flayed edges for this particular step because it will get, you know, like multiple streaks and all that kind of coming down. It'll, it'll look uh, extra gnarly. Yeah, you could do a lot more with this wound on her rib cage here because you can you can actually see it's it's hard to it's hard to zoom in that close, but you can actually see uh, it's probably easier without all the blood on there. But you can see the rib the ribs coming out there on the side. You can see like two ribs on the side there sort of coming out. Again, I don't think it'll be a big deal if you just sort of go over everything with this sort of bloody color right here. But it's just something to uh, keep in mind. It's something that you can maybe do for like extra credit, you know, extra detail, whatever, if you if you want to do that, you can go over with, uh, like, you know, a bone color or something like that. Yeah, and just sort of bring it down, and like so. Oh, oh, that was a really big streak. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We'll maybe just sort of splatter it around a little bit like that there we go all right and i imagine she's probably got a lot of blood around her mouth because she's probably been chewing on some dead folks so we'll just kind of spot her mouth like that Just like that, and I would say that that's pretty much all that you really need there. Please focus, camera. Would you please? Won't you kindly? Would you kindly? Uh, close enough. That's fine. Yeah, there you go, and that that'll do just fine. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the rest of the with the zombie ladies, and then that'll be it. Well, there you go, everybody. Those are the female zombies from the Resident Evil 2 board game, and I think that they turned out pretty well. I think that the color variation there was pretty much spot on. We got, like, sort of a red theme with uh, some sort of, um, you know, complementary colors there. I do realize now that the tanned flesh and the lava orange are maybe a little bit too similar, actually. They, uh, they're a little bit more difficult to tell apart from like the red and the pink but otherwise it's not too bad i think that that came out pretty well so thank you everybody for watching if you like the video go ahead and throw it a like if you want to see the rest of the resident evil 2 board game getting painted go ahead and subscribe to the channel i uh oh, i think i'm gonna do the police zombies next week and i am try and i am like sticking to a, a deadline i'm posting a new video every week every sunday so you have that to look forward to and that'll pretty much be it. If you want to follow me on uh, Instagram or Twitter, I've got the same uh, handle, which is Paint a Mini, so you can find me there. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sort of more just myself on Twitter, but on Instagram, it's mostly just miniature stuff. So you know, you can decide what you want to do from there. Uh, I won't take up any more of your time, though. Thank you again, everybody, so much for watching. We'll see you next time.